Auntry. Okay, let's get started. The recording has started. Welcome to um, day four, our career session. So we're starting to prepare our application materials. And the very first thing that we're going to do is to revise our CV. Yes, we shared our CVs in week zero, but um, you know, we just shared them for the sake of just sharing them. You did not receive like solid feedbacks around them. But this time, of course, we are preparing the resumes that we're going to be using in applications in the upcoming SGS phase. So that is why we are going to go through the steps again, share the template again, or if you can get the templates, that's very okay. This time you will have to add different projects you did in 10 Academy, or even add any other necessary information that you forgot before. Like this time, uh, it should be very, very intentional. The CVs should be very, very intentional. Something that really shows the hiring managers your value and why they should invest in you. Because hiring you, it's an investment that the company be doing financial wise. So we should be very intentional about it because they will also be intentional about looking when looking at it, you know, every single detail that you have there. So um, let's go into it. Let's go into it. It's no hard. It's just really spending your time and ensuring that you, you, you work on it according to what we are going to be seeing here. Okay, bow one moment, one quick one, one quick one. Okay. Okay, all right, sorry for that. Let's get started. So uh, going back to the CV overview, your CV is basically a marketing piece. It should be highlighting your strong points when it comes to your education, your professional experiences, your projects. If you do not have any professional work experience, then it should be showing something uh, internship or something volunteering that you did in the past that is related to the roles that you're going to be applying. And then the projects and the skills and accomplishments. And also to highlight one thing, we are into the track selection. Uh, most of you have already filled your form and the CVs that we're going to be creating, they should be related to the track that you chose. That means when it comes to um, to what you're going to be writing, especially in the summary part, we're going to be seeing it in the summary part, in the education part, at STEM Academy and the projects part, you should be highlighting things or the projects that are related to the track that you selected. So yeah, so basically it should be highlighting your strong points when it comes to education, professional experience, projects and then your skills and accomplishments throughout your career. And then the purpose of the CV, most of the time in the hiring process or in the application process, is just to get an interview. You'd craft it really well so that it can sell you to the hiring managers before they can even hear you. You know, it, it, it should be attracting them to listen to you or to give you an opportunity to come and uh, have a conversation and talk in details about what you have in your CV. And that is why it, the most, it is very important to be interesting. Make whoever read your CV view you as a valuable or as a value to their cause. 
By writing an effective CV, we are also trying to ensure that it satisfies to audiences, which is the humans. You know, the CV should be clear, attractive and informative and looking professional. And the machines, uh, the CV will be subject to automated scanning by a variety of services and we want your, your CV to perform well in the scanning. This, this is when it comes to the ATS uh, softwares, you probably heard of them, the application tracking softwares, where um, especially in the current lay of world and tech trend, tech growth world, where so many tech companies are attracting so many people around the world because they are offering remote opportunities. They receive thousands of applications, which is uh, hard for a human just to go through all of them. So they just scan them and leave a few CVs that humans can check. So we want to ensure that it passes the ATS and we want to ensure that uh, when it gets to those humans behind the ATS, they get interested in um, talking to you and giving you the interview. So um, this one, we already looked at it. So let's to, let's go into demonstrating value specifically. What employers have in mind when they are um, looking at your CV, they're asking themselves, how can you be valuable to us? and the value equals your experiences plus accomplishments, you maybe have your experience, like so many people do in their CV, just highlighting, I did this, I did X, Y, Z, I did X, Y, Z, and they forget to add the accomplishments because nowadays uh, we already know what to do as a data engineer. We already know that what was your job uh, description, but we want to know how successful were um were you during that time in that position when you were doing what xyz what came out as the results what accomplishments did you have and that should be like very very visible in your cv so i will be showing you how we have to really add these accomplishments in in a manner that it communicates our success in those roles and then it should be highlighting your skills because of course show that you have the skills that backs up how you did everything in the experience part. And then also your education, it can be related to tech, it cannot be related to tech, everything is okay. Most of the time now, people are more interested in the experience part or the project part, anything tangible that you worked on. So if you do not have a background in tech, do not worry at all but if you also have a background in tech that's also great so successful job seekers understand their unique combination of experience plus accomplishments skills education and they and that gets those values to the employers and of course through that resume through that cv so let's go into the cv components part which is the contact information part number one it should be having your name clear name and um when we are talking about the name ensure that the name of your c on your cv matches the names that you have on all other platforms you see how when you're crafting your cv you attach there the link to your linkedin page link to your github page ensure that your names are very cons consistent especially to the people who have three names sometimes you have three names on your linkedin uh, on the other side, you have two different names that on GitHub, and then you have two other different names on your email and then on your CV. Like, do not imagine that everyone can tell that that is the one person who has those all different names on different platforms. So ensure that your names are clear and you do not uh, give people the opportunity just to care about this small thing. You do not want them to. And then number two is the contact information, email and then phone number are important, just in case someone who can call you directly, probably in your zone or in your region, can be able to reach you by phone. And then address, you can put it there um, if you are constant in your country, but if you're someone uh, moving from places to places, then do not bother putting it there. And then link to your portfolio pages, GitHub profile, Medium profile, and then LinkedIn accounts. Do not worry at this time if you do not have uh, 
a medium profile, let's say developed and LinkedIn account profile developed, it's because by next week we will be having uh, sessions regarding uh, how to create these two accounts. And then when you are done creating them after those sessions, you can attach the links there. If you already have, ensure that your CV highlights uh, have the links that goes directly to these profiles of yours. And then let's go to the professional summary. So this this should be a 50 word brief description of yourself in relation to what you can do and the concepts and tools that you are familiar with. Again, it's a 50 word brief description that finds you in relation to what you can do and the concepts and tools that you are familiar with. Like if I was uh, to read your pro your cv um like i'm coming to eat i'm the hiring manager i'm going to be spending like 30 10 to 30 seconds scanning it for the very first time i'm interested in looking at the summary more than how i'm going to go into details in the work experience so that's why we have to be intentional that the summary really communicates who we are what we are capable of and how we do it and what we use when we are doing that specific job um, in those 50 word summary and it's very possible we um, of course when you are creating your cv try to get these 50 words very very meaningful we will be giving you feedbacks also in your respective channel after submission in your respective career channel after submission but we have uh, of course also as we will be very intentional about these 50 words you will see but we have we will be very intentional about this very first part of the CV. Um, then with the 50 word summary, a recruiter should be able to easily see which career track is being pursued. Is it Gen AI, machine learning, web three, and data engineering? Oh, of course, ignore web three. <laughs> and then number two, um, three to five really want really want tech technology keywords and this should speak to the employers and should be an intersection of what the trainee have been exposed to as part of their upskilling within their tracks and what employers want the trainee to be able to use from day one and number three what the trainees are familiar enough to work with or speak about during an interview Then number three, um, your CV should be highlighting, um, it, it should be showing that it's of a professional. That's why you do not start your summary saying that you are a student or you are this and that. So it just go straight. If you do not have any work experience, of course you call yourself a junior. And of course, also if you are new in your track, majority of the people who are going for Gen AI, we are going to be using the word junior as we phrase our um, our summaries. So the word junior, just to present that we are new in the in that specific track, but of course we have experience, we can do things. But it doesn't have to highlight that you're a student, even though you are still. And then number four, uh, and then the, the, your CV uh, is, uh, it should be showing that you understand what employers are looking for in a junior level employee. For instance, we have a few examples that the junior machine learning engineers, you are most likely to maintain features than to run your own full scale data analysis, like 100%. And then the junior data engineers, you are more likely to maintain pipelines and not build them like successfully 100%. But if you can do, uh, you know, this is on a junior level. So if you can do, of course, you do not have to put that you are a junior. And also understanding that employers want reliable, high quality tested systems, which are uh, computationally efficient. Also, you should be able to showcase that in your summary. And then let's go to the technical skills. You should be helping the recruiter to scheme your CV and look for familiar keywords, technologies, and platform, which are relevant to the track being applied for. Includes the important acronyms because they are the ones that everyone is familiar with or uh, any abbreviations. So for instance, languages, you can put there C++ or C, Java, uh, or the databases, Oracle, Access, well, ETC. 
And then on the experience part, who there they really for work experience, internships and volunteer positions. Relevant. When we say relevant, uh, we are going to be applying for jobs uh, in our respective track. And if you have kind of, let's say it was a volunteering position and uh, it was in kind of, how can I say, very irrelevant position, you know, probably it was in an NGO and you were assisting the project managers on this and that. I don't think that would be relevant, but if you had an internship where you, you worked in a tech company, even though it was an internship, it's very okay, put it there. And also for the work, but if it was a work experience and pro probably it was in project management or anything else that is not tech, put it there, put it there, because in why one way or another, you might have been a marketing manager and now you are doing data engineering and may, you might get a job where you are going to be support as a data engineer supporting the marketing team simply because you have been a marketing manager before. So put there uh, your work experience, but be selective when it comes to internships and volunteer positions. So when you are writing the experience part, so now we have already highlighted the titles. Now we are going to go into highlighting like what were you doing specifically? Make sure that um, in your achievement, when you say I was running this and that, this project, do not just say you was running this project. Ensure that you tell us which result did you get uh, in that project specifically? How many clients were being served if you were working with clients directly? Or how many team members were you managing? You know, um, if it, it was a project that you, you were, you know, leading a team in that specific project. So that's an example. But also imagine in your work experience what you were doing, um, what were the achievements in numbers, in numbers, what were the achievements in numbers. Or if you were a web developer before and you helped this company develop, uh, um, let's say what, probably you were working on the search engine optimization, how did that help the company specifically? or if it was not supposed to be impacting the company, how did it impact uh, the team you were working in? Basically, how did you define success in your position? You know, take it like simply that way. How were you defining success in your position? And then put there how you define that success in a way that it is easy to understand and in a way that shows that you were successful in that job. And then when it comes to projects, um, we put it here, uh, nigga, let me not mislead. We said optional, but now we should be able uh, to have something to write on the project part. Include all the uh, notable projects that you carried out, including a short description with a link to the project. That also speaks back to the 10 academy projects you have done here. Ensure that you have the name of the project and you have a very short description of what the project was about. And then the link to the GitHub repository or anywhere that we can read more about um, your project. And then on the education part, include your educational background in reverse chronological order. And it should be showing your major and graduation date or expected graduation date to those who are still in school. And then add your GPA if it's strong or if required by the company. Only, only these two options should make you add your GPA. If for, you feel like your GPA was not strong really to be put there, uh, do not put it there because it can look like a red flag. And this is not actually necessary in many, um, in many, to many companies, they do not really consider uh, what GPA did you get. They, they just consider that you graduated. But if it's really good to show off there, put it there, it may sell big time. And then do not include high school or primary education, of course, 
relevant coursework or so trainings and their completion dates should be there. That means 10 academic trainings to those who did other certifications before, like really good pro, really good training that were that were long term, that were uh, long term, that means from three months up to six months and everything. And so make sure that you put them there. And then when it comes to license and certifications, always list the certificate certifications on the CV in also reverse chronological order. For each certification and license that you list on your CV, it should be including the full name of the certification, issuing organization, the date you and the certification, the location if applicable, additional very few details if applicable. If you were just like to highlight what um what led to that certification specifically if you add really very additional details that's very okay and um do not confuse professional certification with honors and awards um especially like uh, to people who we have been working for companies that offer like after every three months they offer the are uh, the the employee of the quota in this department I believe that are not supposed to really be on a CV unless it was a very big award, a like company award after the whole one year. Yeah, something that you see that has value, be sure that you're, it's the only thing that you put um, in, in your CV. And then when it comes to the CV format, first impressions are very important. So ensure that you have consistent styles, punctuations, really very important. And then fonts, ensure that the, if the titles, one title is bold, ensure that the rest of the titles are bold and ensure do Uh, can you hear me? Okay, okay, sorry. Let's go back. Yeah, so one important thing is that we should be having one page at most. One page, one page CV, one page CV. Again, uh, so many are going to be like, um, one page is very little, but in our own experience, as we are trying to target uh to target jobs that are within our tracks and many of us it's the very first time doing this or we are we will be applying for junior positions most of the times so we want that you do not have two pages that speaks things that are not related with uh generative ai for instance because prior you had different experiences so make it easy for the 
uh, make it easy for the hiring manager just to see that uh, in your summary, you mentioned that you are looking for junior positions and in the project part also it shows your generative AI projects that you did at Ten Academy. And then in the middle, it should just be showing the hiring manager that you have like prior work experience, but you do not have to take two pages explaining all the work experiences that you are really not, you know, you you do not want him to really see that like a hundred percent. You just want to showcase that you were working, but you do not because it's not adding any value. I don't know if I'm communicating well, but it's it's not adding so much value because if your prior experience was in marketing and now you want in generative AI, so you do not want your CV to be felt with just marketing things. That's why we want to summarize them in just one page, one page, and this is possible. So try as much as possible to have just one page, to have very few bullet points on each work experience, bullet points that make sense, to have um, bullet points on your projects that really make sense as well, like very few ones. And, um, and also, where else do we have to have bullet points? I, I believe it's just there. And then there's the skill part, like try to squeeze everything in just one page, one page CV. Because unless we're going for managerial position, then we'll be doing two pages maximum. But if we are going straight to starting point, then we have to be having one page CV. So let's try as really as possible just to have one page. And it's very possible. And we have a template that we're going to be sharing with you. And it's just one page. So if you can try to use it, or if you have your own template as well, that is looking good, but you can have everything in one page, then that's very, very commendable. Um, okay. And also uh, on this part, on the one page again, when you we encourage one page but because this is the, going to be the first submission first submission is on saturday and then the second submission after feedback will be on the next wednesday so in this first submission if you see that you are failing to have everything on one page have them on two pages and then we will help you uh, find a way that you can squeeze everything in one page but in your own like uh putting so much effort to have it in one page put on so much effort to have it in one page it's the ideal one and if you can't have it in two pages but ensure that we can also see um all the tutors who are going to be looking at your cv can see why you couldn't have it on one page they could see the important informations that you did not want that the hiring manager misses you know so do it um uh with a good intention like not for the sake of submitting or not for the sake of feeling like i don't know how to squeeze this in one page just do it with a good really professional intention um then finally let's have a look at uh like everything or also other things that you should be considering on your checklist ensure that your cv have no photo we already looked at like why it does not have to have no photo no it's in the uh first of all the the data you how do we, yeah data storage uh it's better they keep your information but not your face and number two, it was for the reports that went out that different hiring managers discri discriminate people according to their looks, uh, even though their CV really shows that they were capable or they were able to do the job and everything. So, you know, from different things that has been trending, everyone really recommend that you send a CV that has no photo. And then number second, uh, name is consistent across your CV, LinkedIn, GitHub, Again, to the people who have many names, who has many names, ensure that you are having um, that your CV, your names are consistent throughout all the platforms, professional platforms that you belong to. And uh, all links work, and when you click, they go to the right place. Sorry for that. 
all links that means where you are going to be attaching your link to the linkedin page and your link to the github your link to medium or your link to your personal profile portfolio website ensure that all those links are hyperlinked and that they are clickable and when they go you click on them they go to the right place you know to the right page and then the cv should be saved in pdf and named correctly that means your full name um underscore your cv then pdf and then zero spelling mistakes really ensure that you look at this and this implies that you have proofread it yourself like twice so, or even asked a friend to check as well. Zero issues with formatting, consistent font size, the type, spacing, paragraphing. This really also implies that you have proofread it yourself at least twice and asked two friends to check as well. And then the next is experience skills and results are consistent and correlate. What we mean here, if uh, you are doing your CV, everything that is written here in your CV should be consistent with what we can see on your LinkedIn page. That means if you put here in your CV that you were working, let's say at Coca-Cola, and this was your experience and these were your results, let's ensure that if we can click on your LinkedIn page, we will find the same information. So why is this? It's because, um, yeah it's because uh some people very unethically um like in the public not here but very unethically they tend to change information on the cv trying to make the results look cool if the project was successful on 60 percent they put their 90 percent and probably some time ago on linkedin they put their 60 percent so when the hiring managers go there and the information do not correlate like they are conflicting each other that means you don't know where that candidate stand so ensure that the information even on the projects part ensure that the information that you have in your cv we can find the same information on your github so yeah ensure that everything are consistent and they really correlate then be clear and concise keep your cv to one page maximum no unimportant information be straight to the point this was your project and these were the results and this is the link to the details of the project done on the work experience you did x y and z using this specific tool and the results were this and that done you like very straight to the point and then no logos no background colors no icons or any other graphic especially um to, to those who find it easy to go to different cv generators you know generator websites they tend to send cvs that has two different too many different colors and you know a lot of disturbing thing ensure that you can keep it plain it's much much better and then use of appropriate keywords matching the job postings and of course here it's just the keywords that matches the tracks that we belong to yeah so up to the challenge documents mm -hmm. bethlehem asked what is meant by being selective in writing internship and volunteer position as experience? So Betty, in it's going to be up to you in your judgment. Uh, do you feel like the volunteer experience, I was giving an example, if you worked volunteered in a certain NGO back when we were starting college, and it's, on, it's not much related with where you are now and where you want to be, and it cannot even contribute anything any value to your CV, then do not put it there. So that's the example I wanted to give because I know the majority of us, we have done different volunteer, volunteering that really cannot contribute anything to our CV in regards to who is going to be reading our CV and what we want them to know. 
So it's in your judgment, the, uh, be selective when it comes to the internships and especially the volunteer positions that you did. So put there something that you feel like is going to add value to your CV in regards to you being a data engineer, generative engineer, or machine learning engineer. Yeah. Um, so before we go into the challenge, let me show you a quick example. Give me one second of our, you know, good CV, like things that we're looking for. An example, example, example. Okay, I want to show you one person who do not have too much experience and one person who has too much experience and how they compiled everything in their CVs and they already both have jobs. Um, One quick one, one second, one second. Okay, I'm bringing them here. And they also used different formats and they all look clean and really communicate the value. Professional experience. Okay, and um, yeah, yeah, I'm going to be sharing uh, this. Um, yeah, I'm going to be sharing them also in the challenge documents so that we can um, consider them when we are looking into how we can have everything on one page. So let's look at the formatting first. So this person looks, um, can you hear me? Okay, Ahmed. Uh, sorry, if you if you go through it, uh, I can ask after this. Sorry. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's look at the formatting. So Abel used um, our CV generator, and he looked for a template that is easy to go through, organized, and that can have all informations at once on just one page. See how having every information on one page is not tiring. You just know where to find the summary, work experience, projects worked on, four projects actually, and then contacts where you can find everything about him. He also have a website of himself here. This is what I meant. And then the skills are really just very straight to the point and the education part is really just everything is, you know, clear and he has also courses that have been worked on uh, when he was at university. Of course, when he had much more space, he could have had like more bullet points when it comes to Ten Academy and also to ALX Africa. But since he did not have much space, it's very okay, you know, very okay. But let's look at the summary. So in the summary, he communicated that he's a generative AI engineer with two years of experience in machine learning, uh, NLP and software development, proficient in fine tuning LLMs, developing RAC systems and props engineering, skilled in Python, SQL, React, vector based and ML frameworks like TensorFlow and PyTorch and have a strong background in full stack development and um, machine learning ops. 
and adapt to integrating MLM models into web apps and optimizing pipelines for performance and efficiency. So if this was a generative AI role, actually Abel got a, a role as a gen AI engineer in a company called Job Leads, like after two months in the SGS phase. So you could see that this really communicated him and everything was up to the point of what they were looking in an AI engineer for that position. So it has like everything, everything. Then in the work experience, um, he has here the, the company name, where it was located, the country where it was located, the name of the position, and then uh, when he started up to um, when he, you know, the, the end dates, but it was still present. So then he went and provided three bullet points per each. And of course, he's a guy who has like extensive work experience, but he had to choose like the most efficient one. He's been working even prior to 2021, but just keep information that are relevant and that you feel like can really sell you to the company. So let's look at like very fast bullet points on each one of them. So he said improved tender file proficiency, processing efficiency by 30% result reducing manual effort from 20 hours to 14 hours per week results again by implementing a rack system that extracts requirements how he did it enabling um enables deadline tracking and highlights special attention items so it's just from the what he was doing on what he was improving he shows the results that were from there what it reduced and also how he did it and more results that he got from that specific work. So you can see numbers, uh, how he did it and what came up from that job. Let's look at the other first line here. Um, here he was a full stack engineer and he designed and implemented a scalable education web app as a backend engineer, creating robust infrastructure infrastructure, efficient APIs, and optimizing performance and security, resulting in a seamless online learning and collaboration platform. You see, he keeps using the word resulting, resulting, like what, what came up from your work specifically? And then he com continued to say that uh, he developed and deployed a secure work management tool on AWS, increasing efficiency by 40% and streamlining access to confidential work files for 80 authorized users, ensuring data protection and easy access. So like you can see the, the lines really communicate what he did, what came up from it in terms of numbers, because hiring managers are interested in numbers, why numbers? Because actually that's how they differentiate people who understand their work and people who just do not understand their work. He had the opportunity just to put here efficient and to put the efficiency on 80%, let's see. He had the opportunity to say that he increased efficiency by 80%. The hiring manager can just look at, you know, because already they already know what you wrote here because the hiring managers have experience in your role as well and they can be able to look at the deadlines here they can be sorry the, the the timeline that is in between here and they can look at everything else that you had to do that you listed here and they be like is it really a reality that you can increase efficiency by just 80 percent in this timeline and everything so that's why keeping here numbers and also if you do not if you were not intentional majority of the companies are like it are, are like that not being intentional about being specific about the numbers numbers that came up from your work try to sit and imagine if, if you did not have like real numbers that you can think of but try to imagine the efficiency of your work how did it impact the company on what level and I'm pretty sure you can be able to predict, was it, did it increase efficiency by 20%? Did it reduce this and that by 10%? Or did it increase everything by 80% in this period of time? Try to imagine and put their realistic numbers. 
So let's look back in 2021. He was a software engineer and he integrated open source ERP with time attendance machine using MySQL and Grand Palace administrations of Ethiopia, enhancing workforce management efficiency by 30% for 200 employees and streamlining attendance tracking process, reducing manual errors by 5%. Very good, like really well written. So we are done with the work experience. Let's look at the projects or let's have another person and see how they highlighted their projects. Um, I'm trying to bring someone. <clears throat> so his name is Miss Gano. His name is Miss Gano, and um, let's look at the project part. So on the project, he say he um, he put there just one bullet point per each, just one definition and a link you know, refresh link that goes directly to what am I sharing? Let me see. Okay, sorry, it shouldn't be GitHub. Yeah, but that goes directly to the GitHub. But let's pause going there first and just look at the project for now. So he said developed a custom retrieval augmented generation rag system to answer a contractual questions enhancing efficiency and accuracy for legal professions. It was here in 10 Academy. Then user analytics in telecommunication referenced SQL and K-means clustering to analyze telecom user data, identifying key custom segments for improved satisfaction strategy. So he was highlighting um, uh, what he leveraged and what was the purpose to analyze telecom user data, identifying these for improved strate satisfaction strategies. And then next also we can see how he highlighted them as well. Um, but all of them, they are Gen AI. I'm trying to find someone who was not Gen AI. So that we can also have a look. But so, yeah, everyone is Gen AI. Okay, no worries, no worries. Okay, so um, I can't find the gen the data engineer ones and machine learning ones quickly, but I will ensure that I share them uh, in the in the in the challenge document when I find some. But here we go um with the person who have very extensive this was like uh one of the um uh, grown people that we had in the cohort a and he had very intensive training he's been a lecturer he's been a teaching assistant he's been you know um, a fellow a consultant he's doing phd he's a phd candidate he has had masters He's done postgraduate, you know, he's really an, uh, an achiever, someone who has gone into uh, a lot of experience, especially in the education sector, and someone who has really been in academia, you know, PhD candidates, he's a big person. So how did he compile everything in one page? Of course, he had to reduce the fonts. That's why you can see that, um, you know, the, the, the size is too small. And then he had to ensure, but by the way, he gives enough time, uh, enough space for the summary because this is where too much attention goes. And then the skills that he had to highlight them on one uh, specific line, like to make, to make sure that he also saves space. And then on the work experience, he put there the experience that is, very recent and has high value 
and that is somehow related with what he is trying to apply. It was on data science and he's looking for opportunities in generative AI. So it meant a lot just to detail these two and then just highlight the rest instead of just detailing them because he was simply a lecturer. He was a lecturer. Of course, he had things that he were doing as a lecturer we can, which can really bring value. But it's better just to put there that you were a lecturer and then uh, put there the information, detail the information that are much more relevant and has much more uh, value to your CV. So the lecturing has less had less value. And then being a consultant for data science had so much value, so he had to put it here. And then on the education part, as someone who has had PhD, it was very important and he wanted to continue, by the way, in academia. And uh, he's currently a tutor here at Ten Academy, really that, that gave him a ticket. So he had to put um, every education that he's worked for here and he, it had to occupy too much space than the work experience because the education is heavier than the work experience he's ever had. Like being a PhD candidate, master, a postgraduate, having two masters, and then a bachelor in science. So he's a mathematician. So he wanted to highlight that because he wanted to keep himself in Gen AI, but in academia. And that's why he applied to Gen 10 Academy as a tutor. Now he's a tutor in a different program. So yeah. Like you can see the intention because even as we were like, can you extend the work experience by reduce the education? But when he told us that he wants to target academia, then that made sense. Reduce the work experience and extend the education because uh, that's where you want to stand. And then on the project part, he highlighted three projects that are also related with uh, Gen AI provided very short, um, very short description and ensured that he hyperlinked the, the links to the projects page to the GitHub repository here. And then on the certification, uh, he put here two different certifications that made sense or that added value to the document. And then everything else, um, GitHub, LinkedIn, Medium, everything was here and the address, like you can see that it's clean and easy to go through. So let's have a look at one last person who I believe did not have much experience. <clears throat> He's also Gen AI. Um, so let's see. The very first part uh, with everything GitHub, LinkedIn, uh, email, not sure why Medium is not there. And then the summary to who he is um, a proficient Gen AI engineer with a robust background in object oriented programming, model training, Python, data structure, and a logarithm, demonstrated expertise in fine tuning, retrieval augmented uh, generation, complemented by skilled data engineering abilities in ETL, data processing, and visualization. And then he went, so the professional experience, even though it has like good titles, like software engineer, it, it, was, um, it was not like really full-time a work experience for him. It was, they, they were kind of part-time and then here he was a researcher and then here he was still in school and, um, you know, just an analyst, junior analyst. So as an engineer, when we asked like, why do you have one bullet point here? He said that it made sense because as a software engineer, you know, he did not want, had a lot of things to do. It was really contract based. 
and he was just like six months in no six months no 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 a lot of months in so it was contract based and he was simply doing this you know um doing the front end of the company website there wasn't much he was doing so he did not want to put their bullet points that did not add value or that did not communicate anything so instead he just put here like a summary of what he was doing and the results that it was uh he got from it and then instead he went here on the research part because he has been part of this institution for long and it meant a lot in the country like it has too much value in the country so he went and instead elaborated on this one because it presents big value in his professional um perspective as an individual then as an analyst also he kept two bullet points and ensured that it communicated what he was doing and the results that got from there and um the ongoing the, the 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 forward of the project currently and then on the project he put here three different projects very short descriptions and the links to them and then on the skills part because he wanted uh he wanted to move you can see that he's looking he's going into generative ai but he's never been in anything machine learning or data engineering or data science before so he ensured that he explained his skills so the technical skills he mentioned that supervised he had um you know sorry supervised learning and supervised learning reinforcement learning predictive analytics statistics modeling time series analysis everything so he went and just elaborated on the skills which is different with how others just mention the skills as just, you know, like here, uh, uh, Python and just straightforward things. But for him, he had to ensure that he explains really well what he's capable of in terms of skills. And then on the certification, he put here two different certifications and then the education part, 10 Academy, and then Adi Sababa. And that was it. So I believe we've got, we, we've seen like five different CVs. Yeah. So is there a CV for one who was just a fresh graduate? Yes, I can find one. Uh, one second, let me see if everything is not expired yet. Okay. <clears throat> so one second i may find it but it, it it may not be really well well defined because i'm seeing that i have the old version of it so one second one second Thank you, Uh, it's loading, it's loading, one second. Um, I don't know why it's taking longer. 
of this. Okay, um, I can see that he was also a developer. So, um, Ahmed uh, craft the CV with just information that, that, that shows the reality of your employability is very okay. And then uh, we will give you feedbacks accordingly. And then uh, Tempscan said, has all the trainees whose CVs you've shown us got a job now? Yes, four of them. One is still looking, but four of them, yeah. One is still looking, but I also think he accepted an internship in a Greek company, just uh, the company said they did not have enough finances to hire them as employees yet. So he requested for just to work for them on a minimum budget so that he can get the experience. I'm not sure where the process is now, but yeah, I, I believe he joined them already, but as an internship, so not like a job job, but also he's still on a job hunt. Um, yeah, yeah. So let's look at the challenge document. It's straight to the point. It's still just for developing your CV requirements. It should be one page CV in a PDF format. Your email address, phone number, and address should be listed at the right top. Provide a 50 word summary of yourself. Uh, this concise introduction provides the hiring manager with information about you, your key qualifications, accomplishments, and experience. It must be brief and pertinent to the job for which you are seeking. That means to the track that you belong to. Then list all uh, your important technical skills and soft skills. Soft skills are just really optional. Just mention the technical skills. If you get more space, mention the soft skills, but they are optional. Then be careful not to list too many skills. Then limit yourself to the skills most relevant to the um, to the application. That means to your train to your track. Then examples of technical skills they should be um, um, maybe your proficiency in Python, SQL, C plus plus, etc. Or you know, RAG. I mean, anything. And then examples of soft skills, they can include your communication, teamwork, time management, critical thinking. These are the most big one. Critical thinking, decision making, uh, organization skills, or design thinking, or you know, change management, um, anything. Then consider how best to make this easy for an employer to scheme and understand what you are capable of delivering by organizing in them into relevant sections. Like it should be easy to go through. Then your education should be in chronological order. Again, we have already said it. Then use digits instead of spelled out numbers where necessary. If you want to say 40%, be straight to the point and just four zero percent. Then use block rule uh, to describe your experience well. That means uh, the, block, the box rule just says, if you have done X, Y, and Z, which tools have you used? What results did you get from there? That's it. And then, but you can read more about it here. Then see the CV template example. We have the CV template example here. You can go check it out or you can use your own template, but keep it to one page really advisable. If you can't keep it to one page, uh, then really, uh, we, yes, we, we will provide feedbacks, but ensure that it's also, uh, it makes sense to why you did not keep it to one page. So like, let's be intentional about it. 
and of course to Tamskin who asked me uh who asked like do these people whose cv you've shown us got a job now like yes like these were part of the really good performers in the cohort and they were intentional about everything when i say like intentional they were intentional about the job surface about the activeness about trying different strategies about revising their cv now and then about about like they were intentional about everything so they were intentional about this as well you know the preparation of the application materials because it's what gets you there so yeah if we are intentional about everything we are increasing our chances really to be considered um and then uh other checklist is that you ensure contact information are there linked to your online portfolios are clickable and they are really it really looks great our hyperlinked or even that fresh you know the other car fresh that shows that there is a link that progresses you know just open a new tab and then ensure of course all links are clickable then take note of the international naming conversion that means your first name to your last name for instance in my like me pascaline iodusenga i spell it like pascaline iodusenga just starting with my uh cultural name we as if you're christian we call it christian name and then goes to your family name so you start with your first name and then goes to your family name just keep it international and then um relevant and target uh targeted experience make sure that you put their targeted relevant experience then proofread the document and confirm there are no spelling mistakes then use a consistent and readable font type and size do not include any extra fancy formatting minimal use of colors actually when it comes to extra fancy formatting it, it also goes along with getting your contents from trust gpt it will give you those fancy flashy words like results oriented in the video with strong background and you know like things that sound robotic no and of course if you want to minimize everything to one page it's better just to put it in your own words so that it sounds human and it can show that you know you are the one who wrote it so avoid any fancy things that can come in your cv minimal use of color especially if you're going to the websites to look for uh templates look for the that one that really is minimal I, that is minimal then be clear and concise it should be one page since recruiters may not have time to really review more than one page and it should be saved and submitted as pdf and the marking rubrics they reflect everything that we have here above um yeah let me add here examples of good cvs from the past so that i do not i do not forget so yeah that's it um do we need to put a reference person no not really no reference yeah best um yes one data I wanted to ask about the, the international naming system that you shared. Uh, if mm -hmm. uh, can you hear my Wandera? I, I think you're breaking. We can't hear you. Is it? Uh, Martin, we can't hear you. Can you try to repeat again? Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay. I was saying, uh, not like me, I'm wondering, Martin, and all my personal documents and everything is named like that. So should I just use Martin Mandera because of uh, because 
we are like we're going to apply to like international companies and that's the system they use is that the purpose yes actually yes, that's actually, the main that's purpose, purpose. Yeah. so i'm i'm echoing from your side okay thanks so yes yeah, that's the main purpose because we're applying on international uh companies so it's better just to keep everything in their format um yeah yeah um martin on all documents you mean like passports yeah, I, yes all my personal documents uh, okay let, yeah completely understandable uh uh, yeah, let, let's keep it on international formatting because, uh, you know, we get the opportunity of them reviewing our documentation when they are offering us an offer, you know, but now when we are on the application phase, uh, on the application phase, it's better that we keep everything on the international format. So, yeah, yeah. But I understand you even even same to me everywhere I'm you the singer Pascaline, but when I'm introducing myself, I say Pascaline you the singer. Uh yeah. International formatting. Okay. Uh Tenskin said for 10 Academy educational background, should we do we put a time frame for three months? No, for six months. It should be for six months. Yeah, it should be for six months uh, that has the date from the start date and then with an underscore present that is still ongoing. Uh, yeah, that is it. Uh, if there are no any other questions, yes, Martin. I was asking. Uh, I was requesting. Uh, can we be? Can we be given more time to work on the evaluation forms, like the form those forms, so that we can make like more decisive, um, like so we we can give like like a better what like better we can answer them better because like right now we're working on this project and at the same time I have to look at the track and prepare and then make up my mind and decide on what to do. So I was requesting maybe we could, could we like submit it like probably like on Saturday or I don't know maybe Sunday or something like that because it's okay, it's yeah. very important that we need to that is uh, is, it, is it the case for everyone? Would we would you also like an extended deadline? okay all right uh yeah so let me talk to the team and then uh it will be announced it will be announced on the slack uh yeah like the new deadline will be announced on this on slack but that is not it thanks martin um yep i guess that is it then uh enjoy the rest of the day see you in cbs very shortly